not going to reach your goals as far as raising higher yielding alfalfa. And you know, our goal is to help you raise 10 ton alfalfa, but you know, quite frankly, if you're raising 5 ton alfalfa and you want to get to 6, or you're raising 6 and you want to get to 7, these building blocks of soil fertility are really, really important. And I kind of use the analogy of uh, if you're going to buy a truck and you're looking at vehicles or you're you already own, own uh, your, your, your truck and you're driving down the road. And I think a lot of producers, when we stop and think about some of these things, where, when we think about uh, our vehicles or uh, I guess any piece of equipment you want to talk about, there's a lot of whistles and bells that are added to, to vehicles today, whether it's a, a truck or a, a vehicle of any kind. There's a lot of whistles and bells. There's you know air conditioning and there's power <laughs> windows and there's you know nice uh, fancy uh, uh, power seats and all those kinds of things in vehicles. And having those things in your vehicles are really convenient. I like to come back and use the analogy of, of these uh, nutrients are so important. This is like having gas in the gas tank before we should worry about air conditioning and power windows and power seats and all that kind of stuff. Building the building blocks to soil fertility is so important uh, to get the high yield alfalfa. One of the most important things here is soil pH. And we need to have this pH probably up here in the 6-9 range, 6-8, uh, 6-9. Six, six, uh, can you get pH too high for alfalfa? Not in, not in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the upper Midwest. I've never seen pH probably get above 7-2, maybe a 7-3, I guess, if we you know, really work hard to get those pHs up. But most of the time, when we're worried about uh, in this, this uh, uh, Mississippi River Valley and certainly these Great Lakes soils, it's very difficult to get these pHs really up. Uh, in, in many cases, up to where they need to be. Now, as we move west, you know, we get out to the, your uh, friends and relatives. As we move west in Minnesota, then our pHs start to creep up as we go west into uh, western Minnesota and South Dakota. But our goal here in this part of this this part of this uh, state is to keep these pHs up into the 6, 8, 6, 9, uh, 7, 0 range. And the reason that is important is because there's a lot of bad things that happen in soil chemistry. Uh, once those pHs start to drop below that, uh, probably that 6, 8, 6, 9 area, okay? For alfalfa, it's so critical. Rhizobium bacteria uh, are not as productive when the pHs drop. Uh, there's a lot of uh, elements that become toxic uh, to alfalfa. And we don't worry about this so much for corner beans, okay? So those of you that are corner bean, soybean producers, you know, we tend to let these pHs uh, drift uh, downward, and we've probably done this over the last 5 to 10 years, Really, as a lot of you have moved away from raising, uh, or a lot of our growers in general have not been as um, critical about keeping pHs up because they're not maybe raising as much alfalfa on their farms and they're moving to corn and soybean production. We need to help you guys think about what should we be uh, doing to help uh, maintain these uh, pHs. In Wisconsin, uh, about one half, if you look at the uh, vendors that sell lime and the soil tests that come into the testing laboratories, we're only applying about one half of the lime that's actually being recommended. So we are not keeping up on our limestone applications in the state of Wisconsin. I don't know about Minnesota, but in Wisconsin at least, the, the soil uh, test uh, people are telling us that we are not putting enough lime on because the soil tests are calling for the lime and it's not being, the vendors are not uh, applying as much lime as, as being recommended. So we know this is a problem, okay? So if you're an alfalfa grower at this meeting today, you, you, it, you, it's just something that needs to be talked about. And there's no one besides a guy like me that's running around talking about alfalfa that's doing this, right? I mean, the corn, the corn and bean guys are not going to talk about this for you, but this is a benefit to your corn and bean uh, crop as well. So if you can keep those pHs up, you're going to have higher yields across all your... Uh, and we've only known about this, I don't know, for, I don't know, 90 years, right? We've only known about this for a long time. Finer line works faster. If you can use 60, 60, or 80, 89 versus 60, 69... The finer limestone works faster. Pell lime is fine, if but it's not going to replace a, a, a ag lime application. So the finer lime is better. Make sure you're getting. Uh, I my rule of thumb is in the Midwest, upper Midwest, you need to be putting on two tons of lime in each alfalfa rotation. So that means every three, four years, two tons of lime needs to go in the crop budget. Then we're going to put lime on that field this year. We're going to put lime on this field next year. We're going to put lime on this field and so on, based upon soil tests now. And I'm not just saying just don't do soil tests. I'm saying as a budgetary um, input on your operation, you need to budget for two tons of lime, give or take, based on soil tests, 
what we need to we need to be planning for this to keep that pH up in that six eight uh, seven range. Yes, sir. What about high calcium line versus the well, the high cal lime versus the dolomitic lime. Remember, it's it's the carbonate that changes soil pH. So there's 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 really three pieces here. There's there's calcium, there's magnesium, and there's carbonate. And the the folks that are talking to you about high cal lime don't really tell you the, the rest of that story, as Paul Harvey used to say. The rest of the story is carbonate is what changes the pH, and the, and the the organic chemistry on that is CaCO3. And it's the CO3 that actually changes its, changes that pH. So the calcium part comes along for a ride. The magnesium part comes along for a ride. Most of our upper Midwestern soils um, probably have enough calcium to start with. And I'm not saying don't use high cal lime. What I want to add in that point is that magnesium is very important to crop development. Magnesium is the central portion of chlorophyll. So I, I, I learned this from some folks in Ohio where we've been using high cal lime for a lot of years, and, and I'm talking about oh, probably 10, 15, maybe 20 years, high cal lime, we actually ran out of magnesium. We got those magnesium soil tests down under 100 pounds per acre, and it was causing problems for us. So the problem with high cal lime is that eventually you run out of magnesium. Remember, high cal lime is, is primarily calcium carbonate. Dolomitic limestone is a mixture of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. Need magnesium for crop development. We're going to talk about tissue tests in just a minute here, but magnesium is really, really important. For so I think that you know an application of high cal line is not a problem. Two applications is is probably fine, but you know ten applications is going to cause problems for us. Okay, because magnesium is important. Now high cal line, if you manage the magnesium portion of that, then we're probably okay. So the high cal line, in, in my uh, experience, is finer ground. Back to this deal right here. The high cal line will tend to be ground very fine. It's almost, uh, it's just really powdery, and it works really fast. And I think that's one of the benefits that farmers see right away is that the high cal line works faster, and the ag line has got that those chunks in it the size of the end of a pencil eraser. I mean, you're you're just you're not comparing the same same products at all. So high cal line is fine uh, if you want magnesium. Okay. Good question. Thank you. That's a great question. Can you get too much magnesium? Well, possibly. I mean, I don't know. I think who asked that question? Did you ask that? Uh, so I think you know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you get up to fifteen hundred pounds on the soil test. Maybe a thousand pounds. Maybe. But you know, those numbers that started getting down in that two hundred range or one hundred fifty range, that, that causes problems. So can you get too much? Maybe. I don't know. There's there's people that say you know it causes you know soil soils to be uh, compacted, and I I don't know if that's really the case. Uh, I, I will tell you that we need to have a balance, and you need you need magnesium, and the the high cal argument is good to a point, but once you're out of magnesium.